APNVideo.com is on the air, and tonight we're coming to you from Gilbert Christian Middle School in Gilbert, Arizona. It's our Arizona Lacrosse League Game of the Week, powered by Ottawa University. As the 6-4 South Point Lancers take on the Higley Knights, formerly the Gilbert Tigers, they come in with a record of 7-3. They were 2016 state champions. And I'm Jeff Lowry with APN Sports. You're getting a look at Frankie Armenta on the far left, Ryan Bowman on the far right, the two respective coaches. Armenta has been coach of the year on two occasions here in Arizona, and he is led by one of the most electrifying players in Coleman Owen. He leads the state in points, assists, and goals per game going into this contest. And heading to the University of William and Penn is Max Standage, one of the top Top defensive players in the state of Arizona. On the other side, South Point, they need to they need a couple of wins if they're going to make it into the playoffs. They're led by Eric Garrigan. He was their goalie last year when they went to the state championship game against Notre Dame. They're led by Dalton Franzoy. He is their leading scorer this year. We'll be back with all the play-by-play action in just a moment. Well, you take a look at our Arizona Lacrosse League APM Power 7. Brophy back at number one with Notre Dame number two. Higley three. Desert Vista is four. Boulder Creek five. Pinnacle six. And Glendale seven. The top eight teams will make the playoffs. And right now, South Point with a six and five record would occupy that final spot. They have two remaining games. And it's going to be interesting. Uh, there's an outside chance Mountain Ridge could get in, but they're going to have to beat Brophy and and Oro Valley. They're going to have to hope that South Point loses both of their games. A couple of the teams like Glendale. If Glendale wins out, they will be in the top four. Uh, Desert Vista and Higley are battling for one of those top four spots. Notre Dame and Brophy have already clinched a top four spot. And Boulder Creek wants to be hosting a first round playoff game. So we're underway. And the opening face off will be a battle between Cam Rash, who leads the state in faceoff wins, going in with 154. Mark Maloney for South Point. This is going to be an area as Higley wins the opening faceoff, and this game is underway. Ground ball by John Levante. 47 ground balls coming in, and now gets around a defender, finds a player, goal line extended left. Seth Gummel, his 27th point of the season on the 15th assist by John Levante, and the Higley Knights have bolted out to a 1 0 lead here in the first. So, a very good start for Frankie Armenta's team. John Levante having an outstanding season this year, number two, and they win another face-off, and they're attacking again. But this time, a good save there by Alec in goal for the South Point Lancers. Well, our lead official here, Steve Adamick, allowing that family to bring their baby in. It is beyond me how many times we see people just not paying attention. Folks, if you go to a lacrosse game, these guys are shooting the ball. Some are shooting upwards of 90 to 100 miles an hour. Thank God Jordy Patterson isn't out here. And you can be seriously, if not fatally, injured by getting hit by a lacrosse ball directly. you got to pay attention out here and really... Uh, just a public service advisement. You know, just be very careful, especially if you've got young kids. Higley trying to go up by two. Alec with another sensational save. He's got two to start things off. We're in the first quarter of our Arizona Lacrosse League game of the week. Higley leads it one to nothing. 
Seth Gummel coming up with his 11th goal on the 15th assist by John Levante. Higley in the all-white uniform. South Point, obviously, in the all-dark. The golden maroon. And Sal Point is out of Tucson, Arizona. Excellent ground ball there. Sean Navarro, one of the leaders. And this should be Sal Point's possession here, a couple of minutes into the contest. Jeff Lowry with APM Video Sports. Well, we're still trying to determine what our flex game is going to be. It will not be Desert Vista versus Higley on Saturday. But we are kind of leaning towards maybe, depending on how this goes, especially if Higley wins this game, uh, possibly Higley at Glendale next week. And I think the playoff scenario is looking very interesting. Of course, Brophy and Notre Dame have already secured a top four spot. We touched upon that at the top of the broadcast. But from there on, it, it is quite convoluted. If Higley can get a victory here and beat Desert Vista, they are looking pretty good. But they've got three tough games. This South Point team is a high-quality team. Desert Vista obviously is, and Glendale, who has beaten Brophy and Desert Vista this year. Dalton going to work. Good job, face dodge shot. Alec with the save, and Coleman comes down with the rebound and races across the midfield line. He's into the offensive half. He'll dish it off, and Wolf finishes strong. What a sensational play by Coleman Owen. And Higley here in the first leads it by a score of two to nothing. Coleman Owen showing you why he's one of the most exciting offensive players in the state of Arizona. Trying to pick up their third consecutive faceoff win, but not this time. Excellent ground ball by Mark Maloney, who really battled in faceoff X. South Point may need to drop somebody here. Maloney will come off the field, and now they'll clear it and nearly intercept it. The ball comes loose, unsettled down in the far corner, and this is going to be white ball. 2-0 Higley here in the first on APM Video Sports. And even though Coleman made a tremendous play, got the rebound, raced it down, great clear, it all started with that sensational save by Colton Johnson for Higley. Quickly up ahead it goes. So face-off wins, 2-1 to one in favor of Higley, and they lead it to 0 And right now, Frankie Armenta trying to get the right personnel on the field. He's asked his team to slow it down. And now we'll work 6-on-6. Six six. Higley comes in here with a record of 7-3. and three. If I said 8-3, and three, I was mistaken. 7-3. Well, South Point is six and four. So, I mean, this is a pivotal, pivotal game. Now, the chances of both these teams getting in, I think Higley is already pretty much clinched. Though they would probably like to get at least one of their remaining three. Here's a turnover. And Caleb Dudas, who is an outstanding defensive player, handles the stick very well. Nice clear that time by Sal Point and Garrett Emmons. Higley, Higley is pretty much in, and Sal Point is in a situation they need to, they have to win one of their remaining three games. Mountain Ridge, who is five and six would have to win out, and Sal Point would have to lose out. They As Franzoy scores to make it two to one. That was an impressive dodge. Got the hands clear, and it's now a 2-1 game here as we are playing here with about halfway through the first quarter. Well, if you're wondering why our screen seems to be a little fuzzy, it's not the camera. This is a dust bowl. <laughs> a quick shot there by the Higley Knights, formerly the Gilbert Tigers. Frankie Armenta, the head coach, assisted by Nate Snyder and Adam Wirtz. Ryan Bowman, who was an assistant to Kevin Krieger, one of the outstanding head coaches we've had in league history. Shot taken, and that's going to be a save, but not this time. 
Boy, I'll tell you, you just stick with it. And Levante coming through as he finds Jeffrey Cole. And Cole finds the back of the cage for his 22nd goal and his 22nd point. He does not have an assist. Levante with his second assist of the game. And Higley wins faceoff number three out of four. And they lead it three to one. Well, we got to stop and play, and we got interference against Sal Point. So it's going to turn it over to the Lancers, the Sal Point Lancers, and the Higley Knights. Now, two teams that are very secure in the playoff, though, Sal Point may have to win another game to actually clinch. They still got three games left to go, this one. And then they travel to Glendale next week, and they also have. Now let me check here. As they take the shot, and this one goes right through. Credit the score this time to, well, an infamous number eight. And that makes it a 3-2 game. So Sal Point draws to within one. Second time in a row, they win the faceoff. It's all about possession. It starts with faceoff, and that's an outstanding play by Chuck McKinney. Sal Point has, of course, Higley here on the road. Then they're at Boulder Creek, and then they are at Glendale. So these next three games, I mean, they're good chance they may have to win one. Now the thing is, Sal Point and Mountain Ridge. Mountain Ridge goes into tonight's action five and six. They have two games left, one with Oro Valley, which you would expect maybe a victory there. Then they play Brophy, who is right now the number one seed in our ranking. And here's a game-tying shot, and McKinney strikes again. That's his first goal, but had an outstanding ground ball on that face-off win just a moment ago, and it led to points, and we are tied at three apiece. First time that we've been tied since the opening face-off. So a tough go for Sal Point, but if they win one of the three remaining games, they will clinch. They would clinch over Mountain Ridge. Mountain Ridge cannot jump the next team in line, which would be Glendale, who is seven and four. Even if Glendale loses their next two, there's no way that Mountain Ridge, even if they win their next two, can catch up with the Vipers. Well, a nice look there by John, and we're going to get interference here. And they're going to give it back to White. So Higley will have it in a 3-3 tie, first quarter action. Incidentally, Glendale has the tiebreaker against Mountain Ridge. Got about three, three and a half minutes left to play here. Unfortunately, we cannot see the scoreboard from our vantage point. So we'll try to hear if the table will shout out the time from time to time uh, throughout this game. But I think this was a great matchup. I'm, kind of, I'm really glad that we had this one. Of course, we had to get Sal Point, try to get Sal Point on the schedule this year. And our main goal, and a lot of times people will say, well, why wasn't our team on the schedule? And a lot of times it's, it, it's matchups. Oro Valley, we wanted to do Oro Valley and Catalina Foothills, but that game was down in Tucson, and it, there was a conflict. So sometimes there is a conflict in scheduling with our scheduling. So, you know, bear with us. You know, we're doing the best that we can and trying to get the best matchups. And I think this is a really good matchup. And we'll see what happens with our flex game next week. But we're kind of leaning towards maybe this Higley team over at Glendale because I think there's going to be a lot of playoff implications there. Glendale and Higley are two teams that still have a chance to host a first-round playoff game if they can pretty much win out. Desert Vistas in that mix. Brophy and Notre Dame have already clinched a home field game in the first round. So an outstanding save that time. Eric Garrigan. 
who had an outstanding season last year for Kevin Krieger's South Point Lancers. They went to the state championship for the first time in school history at the Division I level. First quarter action, 3-3 tie. Higley has really come on strong. They've had quality, quality wins against Mountain Ridge. Well, I think it's a very good team. I, I just, I mean, there's a lot of competition. Uh, there's a lot of, I think we have more quality teams this year than, than ever since I've been in this league for the last 16 years. Goda throws it away, but there was a flag down, and this is going to go against Sal Point. I think this is a cross check. Yep. So the cross check goes against one of their top players, Caleb Dudas. And for the first time, we got a man up situation here. First quarter action, 3 3 tie. I think the playoffs are going to be awfully, awfully exciting this year. I don't think there's going to be any doubt about it. I think no one – I don't think you can take one team, though, with Jake Smith coming back. Excellent job by Garrigan, by the way, as I'm rambling. Jake Smith, maybe the best athlete in the Arizona Lacrosse League. He's going to Texas on a full football scholarship, rated the top football prospect coming out of Arizona. And the Knights will have the possession – is back at Notre Dame. And I said this at the beginning of the year, where is Jake Smith? If they had Jake Smith, I think they would be a clear-cut favorite to win. But you got to win it on the field. You don't win it on paper. And it's going to be an interesting finish. we got a timeout. There's Frankie Armenta. He's done a sensational job with this Higley slash Gilbert Tigers program. There's the fake, and he goes up top, and he finds a promised land. John Levante, he faked the cameraman out and then ripped one through to give his team a 4-3 lead. That is his third point of the game. He's looking awfully good out here today. His first point gives Higley a 4-3 first quarter lead in a man-up situation. Another face-off win. Higley with a slight advantage there in face-off X. Levante slowing it down as we are winding down quarter number one here from Gilbert Christian Middle School in Gilbert, Arizona. Gummel, who scored the first, works it around. And a great Garrigan save. Nearly tapped in by the eighth grader, Gavin Wolf. This young man's got a bright, bright future in this Arizona Lacrosse League. 24 for the White. So we go to the second quarter of play. Our game brought to you by the Ottawa University Arizona Lacrosse and a 4-3 Higley lead over visiting Tucson South Point. Second quarter action back here from Gilbert Christian uh, Middle School. Yeah, there, there you go. Uh, AKA the Dust Bowl. And Cam Resch, who's been the top face off winner this year. A lot of people think Matt, maybe senior Matt Hardig is one of the best, but I'll tell you, when you see a face-off win like that, it's hard to hard to deny Cam Rash. Only a sophomore, and he's had a big year this year for Frankie Armenta's Higley Knights. 
So they have won six of the first nine face-offs and lead it four to three here as we start quarter number two on our Arizona Lacrosse League Game of the Week powered by Ottawa University Arizona Lacrosse. Coleman Owen, he's the ball carrier. Face dodge, pulls the trigger and left it high, sailing over the head of Kerrigan in the pipe. Higley was backing up the shot, and they'll have possession with a one-goal lead here in early stages, quarter number two. Now try to work it out of X. Coleman Owen calling for the ball. John Levante and Coleman Owen, I think two of the – I think they're the two of the best players in the state. And then you talk about super underclassmen, Josiah Jagata, the freshman and the eighth grader, and Gavin Wolf and the sophomore Cam Resch. I mean, this is a very talented Higley team, and one reason why they come in here winning four in a row. Garrigan on the save. Higley 7-3 and three by way of record. And ranked third on our polls. So after the missed shot, Sal Point able to corral it. Dalton Franzoy, their leading scorer, brings it into the offensive half. And here's a ground ball shot by Chuck McKinney. He has his second goal of the contest, and just like that, we're tied at four apiece. So McKinney, I mean, that was a, a worm burner, no question about it. He went downstairs and... Was able to find the back of the cage, and we're tied at four apiece early stages of quarter number two. Good ground ball there. I'll tell you what, when you get a contribution from your long stick midfielder, and in this case, Max Standage, who is heading to the University of William and Penn, congratulations to him. A 4-4 tie, yet South Point has lost 70% of the face-off possessions. But you cannot continue that trend if you want to stay in this game. Levante, whose dad is up here filming. Shot, and John is going to be turned away by Kerrigan. Kerrigan with... Credited with the save that time, and South Point with a chance to take the lead. Second quarter action. They're led by Caleb Dudas on the long pass, and a good stick check there by Wolf. So Gavin Wolf, good job. A turnover that gives it back to the Higley Knights. 4 4 tie. Here's Whitkin, back over to Coleman Owen. Coleman coming in, 45 goals, 21 assists. I mean, he is having truly a monster year. And the great thing about his season, and right now, I mean, he might be the player of the year. He leads the state in goals, assists, and points per game. And his 45 goals coming in ties Victor Verbalitis of Pinnacle for the most goals in the state. But in terms of games played, he has the top average of all the three major categories. Plus, he's got 35 ground balls. He's going to be flagged here. That's going to be a cross check. Ill advised goal, uh, ill advised penalty as you see Caleb Dude is all fired up. It's a one-minute infraction against Coleman. And I would say the one Achilles heel that I've seen out of Higley this year, I've only watched him a couple of times, uh, too many penalties. Uh, a little bit like Pinnacle over there. They, uh, they've got to really be a little more disciplined because you never know when you're going to get a two-minute non-releasable, and that's the difference in the game. I mean, I'm just being honest. Because this Higley team's got all the, I think, all the makings to win a state championship this year. But you don't do it on paper. Outstanding ground ball by Dudas. I'll tell you, number 55, I mean, he's just a gamer. He is a gamer. That's all you can say about 55 on the block. And now Sal Point just gave up a possession here. Did they? No. Franzoy picks it up. Franzoy, one of the top players on this South Point team. He will take the shot, and 
and find the promised land. Franzoy with his second goal of the contest, his 17th goal of the season, and we are tied. No, well, actually, that gives South Point a 5-4 lead. So South Point up 5-4 here in the second quarter of play on Dalton Franzoy's second goal of the contest. He has 17 goals, 29 points on the year. So South Point, even though they have not gained a lot of possession time in this contest, as this face-off again won by, and three in a row to start the second quarter by Higley. 8-3 advantage and face-off possessions for Higley. Now the eighth grader, Gavin Wolf. Has a bright future, no question about it. Here's the dodge. They tried to give it off to, I think that was uh, Fitch, who was in the pipe, couldn't corral it. Levante, a great job backing things up, but then he throws it away back into the other half of the field, and that's going to be an over and back. So South Point with a chance to go up by two. It would be their largest lead of the contest. In fact, they're enjoying their first lead, and that one caught Pipe City, and that one goes out of play. What? Are you kidding me? They are going to credit Franzoy with the goal. That clearly hit the pipe, and I'm not... <laughs> Steve Adamick, you might want to check that on the uh, APN replay. 6-4, to four, Sal Point on top. That ball looked clearly like it hit the pipe, unless it was an optical illusion. And another face-off win for Higley, but they're going the wrong way on the scoreboard. They trail by two. That is unbelievable. Well, when we get a break here, I think we got to check that on our APN replay. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Coleman Owen, he's been a little quiet offensively. Garrigan on that little pill there. Well, we're going to get an unnecessary roughness against Sal Point, and it's going to put a man up situation here for Higley. Higley's complaining about something, but they're a man up. So Higley needs a goal here, and they had a man out at the doorstep. The pass goes errant, and South Point will have it with a chance to kill this penalty with 43 seconds left to go in an unsportsmanlike or uh, a necessary roughness penalty, and Higley doing a good job. They pushed out the player. Good job by 5-0, who's not on our roster, and here's Higley. Still a man down, Wolf, shot, Josiah has found the back of the cage. Jagoda with his 31st point and it's a 6-5 game. So Higley, a man down goal. Josiah was first goal of the contest and it couldn't have come at a better time. Five straight face-off wins here in the second quarter and 10 of 13 for Higley. And maybe the only reason they're only down a point here against visiting Tucson South Point. Shot and turned away by Garrigan. Garrigan, a quality, quality senior goalie for the South Point Lancer team. Led by Ryan Bowman. But he can't stop that. Poor defense. Allows Sean Navarro to sneak in there and tie the game, his six, first six. goal of the season. Five minutes to go. So Navarro scores to tie it up. Higley back-to-back -back goals with five minutes left to go here in the second quarter. Gavin Wolf, and they just continue to dominate face-off X, does Higley in the white tops and the gray shorts. Their next game coming up, Higley that is, they'll be taking on Desert Vista. Good job of working without the ball, but 
execution was the problem that time. And now in trouble is Caleb Dudas, and South Point gets the timeout. That's a good timeout by the sideline. All right, so while we have a chance, I got to look at this on the replay. The shot by Franzoy. And you can see this is going to clearly hit the pipe. Yep. There was absolutely no doubt about it. And I have no idea why the officials called that a goal. That thing went flying out in front of the crease. Actually went to the right of the crease as we come back to live action. And, you know, it's tough. Uh, and to be honest with you, this is like the fifth time in the last three games I've covered where we have seen this happen. And probably about the seventh or eighth time this year I've seen it happen where the goal has been awarded. So Higley coming out of a timeout here. We're in a 6-6 tie in the second quarter of play. It's our Arizona Lacrosse League game of the week powered by Ottawa University Arizona Lacrosse. They'll be starting up their MCLA Division II team next spring 2020. Good save. Garrigan's had an outstanding game but this is a good clear. Here's South Point on the buildup. Franzoy with three goals. Good check over there on the far side, and you got to like the play of Chuck McKinney, second-generation player here at South Point. Of course, Kevin Krieger was the head coach of this team last year. They went to the finals, had a close game in the finals against two-time champion Notre Dame. They come up with a big steal here, but then they throw it away, and it will be Higley possession here. Second quarter action. Krieger stepped down, and his assistant, Ryan Bowman, has taken over. And let me tell you, this South Point team coming in with a record of 6-4. and four. They've won three straight. Higley's coming in here. They've won four straight. South Point has had victories over Mountain Ridge, Desert Vista. They lost to Brophy by just one. And I think considering the fact as Garrigan comes through again, got to change that eye level on that goalie. That's too easy for Garrigan. Considering the fact that they lost, what, nine of the 11 seniors, or nine of the 11 starters to graduation, including some of, I think, some of the great players we've seen in recent years in the Arizona Lacrosse League. Okay. McKinney and, and Max Manka, maybe the best uh, so, uh, face-off guy that we have ever had in the Arizona Lacrosse League. I mean, he was, you know, and I said his junior year, I thought maybe he should have been the player of the year in the Arizona Lacrosse League. I, I really I really mean that because of the impact that that young man had. Ground balls, face-off wins. And we're going to get a turnover here. I believe it is a interference against Sal Point. Here's Coleman Owen going to work. But considering all the losses that this team endured due to graduation and Higley, who has scored three straight, and young Josiah Jagoda scores again on Coleman Owen assist, his second of the day, and Jagoda's second goal of the day, and Higley leads it by a score of 7-6. So South Point went up, and they finally win a face-off here, but then they throw it away. This one's going to go sailing out of bounds. But I want to get back to it. I really want to give Ryan Bowman and his staff a lot of credit. This team, 6-4 and four coming in. I think a lot of people thought, thought that they wouldn't even be a playoff team because of all the losses, but Franzoy... Dalton Franzoy has really kept this team together. Elijah Dahan, who got hurt again. And look at Garrigan. And this guy has been, you know, he's going to he's gonna finish in the top 15 or 20 in the MVP standings. One minute. So one minute left to play here as Stevie Abara, one of the mainstays on Frankie Armenta's defense in the Higley Knights, but then they throw it away. Wow. Cade Skiles has got to do a better job than that. Now you give South Point a chance. And you got to like Caleb Dudas, 55. I mean, he is a gamer. 
He is going to take it with that long stick. They'll set it up. They got time. About 30 seconds left to go here in the first half. Jeff Lowry with you, APN Sports, APNVideo.com, and our coverage of the 2019 Arizona Lacrosse League. High shot, no. Colton Johnson with the save. Well, Navarro, or check that, number six, Chuck McKinney. A little too much sidearm. And, you know, we've got people coming in here with small children. They're walking behind the crease. We got a timeout Sal point. And it really, folks, you have to pay attention when you come into these stadiums. As Frankie Armena talks to his team, folks, you can't bring your child in here or yourself and leave yourself in the line of fire. Somebody is going to get hurt. The ball is traveling anywhere from 80. Thank God we don't have Jordy Patterson out here, 106 mile an hour shot. The old Corona Del Sol player here. Good defense by Sal Point. Final seconds of the first half. And Levante is going to be turned away. What a tremendous save that time. Eric Garrigan, and we are coming to the end of the first half. Higley leads visiting Tucson, Sal Point, 7 to 6. This is the Arizona Lacrosse League on APN. Back here from Gilbert Christian Middle School. Jeff Lowry on the play-by-play. 7-6 Higley. They come out in the light color uniforms. They all dark. Sal Point. Higley comes in with a record of 7-3, riding a four-game win streak. The Lancers have won three straight. They are six wins, four losses. And both these teams trying to secure a playoff spot. And, well, to be quite honest with you, there's a flag down on the play. Higley trying to secure a top four spot, which would allow them to host yet another game here in the Dust Bowl. Here's Levante starting to dodge. Moves right, throws high to Coleman Owen, and it was tapped in by Owen. And it's 8-6. to six. Owen with his first goal of the contest. And Levante is going to be credited with the assist, his third assist of the game. And to make matters even worse for Sal Point, Mark Maloney is going to be called for the penalty. So that's going to put Higley in a man-up situation. They have scored four straight. After falling down 6-4 to four in that second quarter, they now lead 8-6. to six. And they're a man up after scoring a goal. And they have won 12 of the 16 faceoffs. Actually, make that 13 against just four on the faceoffs. 13 plus nine on faceoff X possessions. Jagoda, number 22. Good ball rotation. Jagoda was open. And Levante somehow got out of it. Great head fake. Gets it over to the wing, and they score again. Man up situation. The eighth grader, Gavin Wolf, has found the promised land. And John has his fourth assist of the day. Wolf scores for the second time, making it 9 to 6 in favor of Higley. And I'll tell you what, Sal Point has got to shore up the face-off X possessions. They lose another one here, it looks like. Three straight, and Higley is on fire. They have scored five straight. Five straight goals for the Higley Knights. Looking for another one, and that one's high, Garrigan. Garrigan's had a great game. Take nothing away from the South Point goalie, but when you're a man down and 
You're slow on the slide. This Higley team's going to make you pay. They've got a lot of weapons. And here's one of them, man. Coleman. Good check there. Down along the goal line extended by number 55, Caleb Dudas. Dudas, Garrigan have been the big standouts for the South Point Lancers in the dark uniforms. Franzoy also with three goals. Good head fake. John, patient, gets it to Coleman and X. Looking to work it around. If Higley wins this game, they go to eight and three. They're going to be a strong number three in our polls. Good look here, but a good check right down the middle by Dalton Franzoy. 50-50 ball here, and it is going to be South Point Lancer ball. And they need a goal. They need to stop the bleeding. They've given up five unanswered goals as we play here in the fourth minute of the third quarter of play on our Arizona Lacrosse League game of the week. And they promptly throw it away. We'll give some credit that time to Sean. Uh, check that Stevie Abara. I think he came up and disrupted that play with a good little poke check over there on the far side for the Higley Knights. Now Levante. Tell you this young man, along with Coleman Owen, and just a tremendous two-man tandem, but you know, you talk to Frankie Armenta, it's more about the team than just two players. Frankie led this program when they were the Gilbert Tigers to the 2016 state championship. They were a low seed playoff team going in. I remember they beat one of the favorites that year, the Brophy Broncos in the semifinals at Brophy Complex. And then faced the two-time defending champion, Dan Lannon's the Desert Vista Thunder, and beat them in overtime. Gavin Christ with the game winner in overtime. It was a great game. One of the best ever. Then the next year, Brophy was back in it again and took on Notre Dame, and Brophy had a chance to tie it with two seconds left to go, and Marcus Komen sees with a save. Ended it. Look at O'Hare over there. Tremendous defense. And he causes a turnover, and here's Higley. Higley Knights with it. Ibarra with a great ground ball. Did he throw it away? Far side. And look at the eighth grader over there mixing it up, and Higley's going to call a timeout. Frankie Armenta knowing that this possession, very important. He's got a three-goal lead here. Well, here in quarter number three, Frankie Armenta with a three-goal lead. Halfway through the third quarter, that's a good timeout. Over to Josiah Jagata, who's got a couple of goals here, 32 points this year. I mean, you look at the abundance of scoring they've got from their top four. Coleman Owen coming in, 66 points. John Levante, 45, who now I think has 50 points. Jagata with 30. And Seth Gummel with 26 points. So four guys that you know you can go to. Of course, Gummel's been very quiet here. He scored the first goal of the contest, and we haven't really heard from him since. Okay. In the pipe, here's the left-handed shot, and it's going to be wide. All right, Higley, enjoying their biggest lead of the game at three. It's nine to six. We're in the third quarter. Wolf from Levante. Levante now with four assists on the day. Levante now with 49 points. Left-handed shot. That one's taken away. Knocked away by Garrigan. Backed up nicely by the Higley Knights. So Higley in the white uniforms leading at 9-6. Here's Levante. Split dodging. And unable to corral it. Coleman. He'll rifle one in. And I'm telling you, Caleb Dudas is doing everything right here tonight. 55 for South Point. 
Coleman with a couple of assists. Let's see, he's got two assists and one goal. And for him, I mean, this is your leading scorer, assist, and points leader, and goal scorer per game in the state. He leads all of those three categories. And yet he's only scored one goal. And here's Levante getting his first. He sent that one from downtown Gilbert. And it's 10 to 6 nights here in the third. So Levante with his first goal of the contest. Actually, that is number two for him. He's got six points here today. He's got 52 points on the season. And they're trying South Point trying to win their first face off here in the second half. And I don't think they're gonna get it. This should be Higley's ball. And it's going to be Higley's ball. So they finally win a faceoff. What about the night by John Levante, the junior, a transfer from Campo Verde a year ago out of Division II? And I'll tell you what, he's not a, he's not a small fish in a big pond. I think he's a shark in this pond. We're going to get a cross-check penalty going against, well, the eighth grader. And I keep saying an eighth grader, Gavin, because I'm impressed with the way you play this game at such a young age. Tremendous. Got a great career ahead of him if he continues to listen to Frankie Armenta and work hard. Higley will not get the possession, but it was a good defensive play that time by Sean Navarro. 10-6 Higley here in the third. And that time, Franzoy was off mark. On the restart, Cole McKinney. And losing it is Chuck McKinney. And the ground ball unsettled. And Coleman Owen. One goal, two assists for Coleman. One of the electrifying players in the state. But I'll tell you what, even though he does not have a big night Offensively for this team, he's drawing a lot of attention. And let me tell you, that opens up opportunities. You can ask Frankie. This is going to open up opportunities here. Release. So the penalty has been released, and both teams are at full strength. 10-6 in favor of Higley over Sal Point. Playoff implications riding here. Higley trying to become one of the top four teams. If you're one of the top four teams in Division I, you will host a first-round playoff game. Well, one thing is for sure, down by four, Sal Point could use some points. McKinney. Draws the triple team, and he goes down hard, and there's the flag. This might be a non-releasable against Higley. And down and writhing in pain is Mr. McKinney, and he's going to be all right. So he comes off the field. Three minutes well, left. as uh, we anticipated, that is a non-releasable three-minute penalty. And Higley just built this lead up. They had scored six straight. After trailing six to four, they've scored six straight. And now they are a man down, a non-releasable three-minute penalty. Good job by the defense. Right now, Higley needs a ground ball. They need a clear. And this one will go beyond the halfway line. Give it back to Sal Point. Higley 10, South Point 6 on our Arizona Lacrosse League Game of the Week powered by Ottawa University AZ Lacrosse. Yes. Colton Johnson coming up with a big save for the Higley Knights. Second opportunity, then this one wasn't even close. Higley's going to get the possession. Good job. Good hustle by Stevie Ibarra. Or Sean Navarro getting those 8 and the 6 mixed up. And he'll get it over to O'Hare. Broken up. Good defense by Sal Point. Well, I'll tell you right now, the Lancers need a goal. 
Cole McKinney, ball carrier. Shot. Colton Johnson again. Excellent job by the Higley Knights goalkeeper. And Gavin Wolf comes up with a ground ball on the other end. John Levante. A very, very dangerous player in the Arizona Lacrosse League right now, number two. And he'll give it up to Coleman Owen, who is a top scorer in terms of points, assists, and goals per game. Higley up here in the third. And about a minute left to go in that three-minute non-releasable penalty. Higley is in a man-up situation. Levante takes it to X, where he is trailed by Zach Manuel. One minute mm -hmm. penalty. So officially one minute in the penalty. You got Dudas taking on Cole, Coleman, Owen. Four years with this program at the varsity level. His older brother was a tremendous player in the Arizona Lacrosse League. He's got a shot at being player of the year this year. It's going to be fun. I'm telling you, the playoff scenario this year, the best it's ever been. And, there, you, and like I said earlier, maybe with Jake Smith back at Notre Dame, that gives them the, the nod. But Doug Lipko will tell you, he'll be the first one to tell you, we don't win championships on paper. We don't win championships because a great athlete returns to the team after missing a good chunk or better than half the season. And you got some good coaching at Brophy, Desert Vista. Seth Gummel back into the game. Oh, and a missed opportunity there. Looked like Jagoda had it. Broken up by South Point. They're going to get the ground ball. Mark Maloney. Interference. Interference against South Point, and it's going to give it back to Higley with a chance to get on the board here before the end of the third quarter. Well, Higley's on a nice little scoring run here, and they've got all the momentum in the world. Here's a shot taken, and that one's going to be corralled by Garrigan, and we head to the fourth quarter. Higley 10, visiting Tucson South Point 6. Six points for Levante, three points for Owen. We'll be back with a fourth in just a moment. Well, Higley really controlled that third quarter, and now South Point will have to lick their wounds and try to make a comeback. They're going to have to start and face off X, a, an area in which they have lost quite a few points. In fact, uh, they are down 14 to five in face off X possessions, but they win the first one to start the fourth quarter and Sal Point in the dark uniforms trail it by a score of 10 to six. Leading scorer in the game, the junior for the Higley Knights is John Levante, four assists, two goals. And John on the season now, 18 assists, 33 goals. Shot taken, that's missed. He's got 52 points. There's number six, that's Sean Navarro. Back on the defense here for the Higley Knights. Well, if you're South Point, you know you've got to, you have to get a couple before the opposing team scores. Early. Because these 12 minutes, we play four 12 minute quarters in high school, they can go very quickly. And they turn this one over. Colton Johnson, who has been very reliable here, though the defense has been very stingy against Sal Point. And look at Coleman Owen coming up with a GB at midfield. 10-6 Higley over Sal Point. Higley trying to get into that top four in the playoff scenario. Sal Point will need another win to make the playoffs. And now Wolf finds a man out high crease and another save by Garrigan. We got a flag down on the play and this is going to go against Sal Point. So one minute unnecessary, it is releasable. It is going to go against Cole McKinney. And so Sal Point here in the early stages of 
Quarter number four find themselves a man down. Well, getting back to that non-releasable penalty just a moment ago as Jagoda coming up empty-handed, but a good ground ball that time by John. Levante, and then goes into Kerrigan, and South Point looks to clear and kill this current penalty. But that three-minute non-releasable at the tail end of the third quarter, I mean, how key was it that South Point did not score not one goal, and really didn't get a lot of shots off either. So if this ends up being a close game, you can go back to South Point's inability to score during that three-minute non-releasable where they were a man up, locked in for three. Here's a high shot, and Wolf leaves it high. 10-6 is our score. And now the penalty is released. Good defense once again. Turned in by Caleb Dudas, and he gets the ground ball. How about that? So Dudas comes up with the ground ball and then goes flying into the post. Coleman Owen with a check along the end line, and I don't know, it almost looked as if Caleb Dudas hit his head on that post. He's going to come off the field, also hit his wrist. Unnecessary roughness. Coleman Owen ejected from the game. Unbelievable. You know, I don't know if he – I honestly, I don't think Coleman meant to do that. I think if he was just doing a check, that might have been a little harsh. Three and to be on it, and it's a three-minute non-releasable. If you, I know you just heard the PA announcer. So a three-minute non-releasable. Coleman Owen has been ejected. High shot good. Well, another one for Chuck McKinney. Looks like I've got him down for three in this contest, and now it is 10 to 7. So that is a man up goal. And for the second time in this game, Higley is going to be playing a man down, non releasable situation. So a golden opportunity right now for the South Point Lancers to get back into this contest. John Levante with his six points here today on the strength of four assists. And I can tell you right now, if Higley gets out of this three-minute non-releasable, we're going to get a cross-check against South Point. This will even things up. Nice job, Garrigan again with the denial. Well, he went guns and roses, slash. Mark Maloney will sit for a minute, so we're going to be even. This penalty will... Well, this penalty will expire in about 50 seconds. Higley will have about, I'm estimating, another 30 seconds on that non-releasable. Right now we're playing five on five. Higley leads it 10 to seven as they're trying to win their fifth consecutive game. South Point trying to win their fourth consecutive. Seven and, a half. Seven and a half minutes left to play here. Here's the dodge and the dish. And Jagoda looked like he had an open shot. Get it back to Levante. Well, Higley has played extremely well. They have been in two three-minute non-releasable penalties. and give up just one goal. Right now, South Point is in a man-up situation, but that's going to end here in a couple of seconds. And right now, I think Higley's just resigned to playing keep away and Garrigan, and he had to use that big chest to block that one, and we're going to get offsides, and it will be Higley possession here, here in the fourth quarter of our Arizona Lacrosse League Game of the Week. Higley 10, South Point 7. 
And they caught Higley's defense off guard here and got a good Three shot, but race. not sure about Cole McKinney's shot selection that time as he leaves it a little wide. And now both teams are at full strength. Outstanding job by this Higley defense. Here in the second half of this contest, two three-minute non-releasables, including the ejection of Coleman Owen, the state's leading scorer in terms of points per game, assists per game, and goals per game. And this Higley defense gives up just one goal in those six minutes. That's just a sensational job. Good check that time by Lane Whitkin. Outstanding midi for the Higley Knights. Formerly the Gilbert Tigers, but the backup, the shot, belongs to Sal Point. Sal Point's next game on their schedule coming up, they will be at home against Glendale, and then they will finish the season against Boulder Creek. Now, the top eight have been decided already. It just depends on where they're all going to fall, and a lot of it's going to depend upon the Higley Desert Vista game that's going to be played here on Saturday. The winner of that game will probably will secure a top four spot. If you make the top four, you will host a first round game, guaranteed. And I'm sure Higley, and Higley's going to have to beat Desert Vista in order to do that. If Higley loses that game, assuming that Boulder Creek wins out, then Higley would not be in that top tier unless they would end up in a tie with Boulder Creek. Then Higley has the tiebreaker with four minutes and 30 seconds left to go in this one. Higley, assuming, let's say they do lose to Desert Vista, they still could get into the top four if they tie or have a one game better than Boulder Creek because they won the head-to-head -head matchup. Now, if they beat Desert Vista, they pretty much have... Second technical foul, holding, South Point. Well, Cole McKinney uh, holding, 32nd technical foul as we approach the four-minute mark here in quarter number four. So, the top eight pretty much has been determined. Brophy has a very good chance of being the number one seed. They got one game left. That's against Mountain Ridge. And I don't think that's going to be an easy game. I don't think it's going to be an easy game for Brophy. Uh, we're looking at Notre Dame, number two, Desert Vista, and Boulder Creek, and Higley. Those three, probably the three main teams that have a chance for the top four. Pinnacle, South Point, and Glendale cannot finish in the top four. Garrigan, again, rising to the occasion on the Levante shot. Higley leads it. Over Sal Point out of Tucson, Arizona, 10-7 here in the fourth. Our Arizona Lacrosse League Game of the Week, powered by Ottawa University Lacrosse, a beautiful campus. And if you want to continue your lacrosse career into college, please check out Ottawa University, Arizona. But again, depending on... I think you've got Desert Vista, Boulder Creek, and Higley all vying for that 3-4 spot and trying to host. A nice move by John. He gets to the open man, and a good challenge there by Maloney. Preston Vallis, number 46, is in there. Taking on Gavin Wolf, the... The eighth grader, if you can believe it. Doesn't play like one. So if Desert Vista does beat Higley here on Saturday, we project DV would be three, Boulder Creek four, and Higley would be five, Pinnacle six, Sal Point seven, and Glendale eight. But a lot's going to depend upon the Sal Point Glendale game on Saturday. So if Glendale can win that one, they could move up. So, But those are your top eight teams. Brophy, Notre Dame, DV, Boulder Creek, Higley, Pinnacle, Sal Point, and Glendale in no particular order, though right now Brophy 
If they can take care of business against Mountain Ridge, they would be the number one seed. The advantage of that is you want to be the number one seed because then you're going to be hosting the semifinals for sure. So the Higley Knights with a 10-7 lead. South Point had their chance here, especially in the second half. They led 6-4 in the second quarter, but then Higley reeled off six straight goals. And a timeout here by Frankie Armenta and his Higley Knights. So I think the playoffs are going to be, I think it's going to be interesting. I think you're going to have some uh, very interesting matchups. And the South Point team is going to need a victory. They're going to need a victory over Glendale. And I think the one team, if you're one of the five, six, seven, or eight seeds, I think the one team you don't want to play right now is Notre Dame. The only problem with Notre Dame's schedule is that their final game was quite a, while, quite a ways back. So they're going to have several weeks off, and you wonder if that's going to mess up with Doug Lipka's team's timing. So that's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be an interesting game between Brophy and Mountain Ridge. I, that Mountain Ridge team's got a lot of talent. They've created fits for some of those top-tier teams. And I think we got a big game on Saturday between as they score... This time it's Cole McKinney finding the back of the cage, and that cuts it to two, but there's only about 35 seconds left to go. And Brophy is playing Mountain Ridge at Cactus High School on Wednesday, the 20, April 24th. So that might be an interesting game. And then this Higley team, after Desert Vista this Saturday, will venture over to Glendale, but Glendale is already clinched. Even if Mountain Ridge would tie them, the first tiebreaker would be head-to-head -head matchup, and Glendale beat Mountain Ridge on our Arizona High School Game of the Week about, uh, what was that, two weeks ago? Failure to advance. Final 10 seconds of this one. Higley is going to go to... Eight and three, we want you to stay with us. We're gonna to talk to Galvin Wolf and the face-off specialist, Cam Resch, right here, powered by Ottawa University Lacrosse 2020. I'm Jeff Lauer. All right, the Higley Knights come up with a 10-8 victory here at home. Uh, congratulations, guys. That was a hard-fought uh, game, a lot of penalties, uh, a lot of hard-hitting. Uh, let's get your names first off. Uh, Gavin Wolf, eighth grader. Uh, Cam Rush, number 10, sophomore. Okay. Well, Cam, I think one of the keys was definitely uh, the job you guys did in face-off X. Yes, sir. Yeah, it was definitely good getting a lot of possessions after the, all the goals we got. It was just good to get the ball. You know? And and uh, so you're in your eighth grade season. I mean, uh, talk about the competition out here. I mean, it had to be a big jump from where you're coming from. Yeah, Coach Frankie's a good coach. He's pushing me to get better every day. And just working with the team helped me out. A lot of leaders on the team. So. How big? I mean, how big was this win? I mean, they're they're vying for one of those top eight spots. Uh, I think it was definitely important that we got the win. Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to help us with the standings, but I think it's definitely an important one for us. Well, you guys still have a, I think, a mathematical chance of getting in the top four. Congratulations! Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.